saxophonist Oliver Lake is known for crossing over. He's collaborated with the Brooklyn Philharmonic and Lou Reed. No separation, he says. It's a philosophy the Montclair artist has pursued for 20 years now with Trio 3. Well, I'm actually attracted to the higher sounds of the the higher sounding instruments. So that's probably why I'm not playing the tenor or the baritone. So I play the alto and the soprano. Reggie Workman is an incredible uh, bassist who has played with everyone in jazz. If you think he was also one of the members of the John Coltrane Quartet. The thing that's incredible about Reggie to me is the sound that he gets from the bass. He's an incredible uh, improviser as well, and his reputation exceeds, <laughs> is all over the place. So when I moved to New York and had the opportunity to first play with him, uh, a lot of times I ended up being grouped with uh, Andrew Surreal, who was also an incredible drummer. Uh, who has played uh, uh, many years with uh, Cecil Taylor. Whenever I have a gig, I would call them. Whenever they had a gig, they would call me. And we ended up saying, well, why don't we form a group, the three of us? kind of try to disintegrate the boundaries of the music or trying to move the music forward in the spirit of someone of Coltrane or the spirit of Miles Davis or the spirit of Duke Ellington. All of these musicians before us were striving to get to the next level. And I think each one of us has that same concept and that's what people come to us for. They know that they're not they're gonna hear something different. They're not gonna hear a traditional traditional sounding jazz when they uh, hear Trio 3. For Oliver Lake, trying something different began in St. Louis, where he grew up. In 1968, he was a founding member of the Black Artists Group, or BAG, young poets, actors, dancers, and musicians, creating art that was artistically and politically avant-garde. It ended up being a wonderful school for me because I ended up accompanying poets, writing music for the big band, writing music for the plays that we presented. As a result of that experience that I had for about three years there, when I moved to New York in 1974, I continued to do that, writing for dancers, working with poets, and even writing poetry. St. Louis was also where he met Hamid Blewett and Julius Hemphill. In 1977, they formed the World Saxophone Quartet, along with New Yorker David Murray. It became one of the most popular jazz groups of the 1980s. Four sax minus rhythm section was different, but it worked. The boundaries had been broken in, uh, in terms of groupings of instruments as well as the way we put the music together. Oliver Lake's experimentation continues. He has a big band, an organ trio, and he's collaborated with artists from a Trinidadian steel pan player to a Navajo singer. But you know, it's not so much the people as it is wanting to hear my saxophone in that context or with that backdrop. You know, uh, for the Navajo vocalist, when I first heard what she was doing with her voice, which is an incredible three octave range that she has, and her improvisational skills are incredible. And she can sound like a saxophone or like a violin, and I thought it was incredible that when we come together, I'm thinking more of how my saxophone fits with that. It's this kind of creativity that's led to recent honors, like the 2006 Mellon Jazz Living Legacy Award, given to artists who have contributed to the development and perpetuation of the music called jazz. Like the Renaissance man he is, the composer, saxophonist, flautist, band leader, painter, and writer recited one of his own poems as part of his acceptance speech, a poem that describes his philosophy. And it's called Separation. 
First it's the meat, then the salad, then the vegetables. Wait, bring all my food at one time on the same plate. Dixieland, bebop, soul, rhythm, and blues, school, school, swing, avant-garde, jazz, free jazz, rock. What kind of music you play? The good kind. Rita Franklin and Sunrise, the same folks. Coltrane, Dixie Hummingbirds, the same. Miles, Muddy Waters, the same. There is no, there is no. Labels divide, separate. The oral and the literary. Well, I consider myself, uh, first of all, a musician and composer. And every, the, uh, the, the, the writing and the painting is just things that I love to do. And I don't think, consider myself pursuing a painting career or pursuing a writing career. But I do integrate both of these things into my performance. Uh, I have a small record label called Passing Through. So a lot of the covers on the Passing Through uh, labels, I paint it. In poetry, I was accompanying various poets when I moved to, to New York and also when I was in the Black Artist Group, which really started me to writing poetry when I was in the Black Artist Group in St. Louis. And then eventually I started incorporating poetry into my solo theater pieces. The Matador, first and first, doing his corner thing. You know, it's a lot of people in New York doing the corner thing, like, give me a dime, or washing a car window. But the matador, first and first, be doing a dance. Moving, dodging, lunging, laughing, swinging. And those cars move out in fright. The same cars that make me and you run. But the matador be dancing. Well, I've been knowing Oliver since probably uh, the late 70s. Um, he was part of a, a group of musicians who came here from St. Louis, and at that time they were doing, you know, they had a different perspective on jazz, and, and I was excited about it. People come because they hear the germ of something original, and, you know, these days you just don't hear that much really original music. 